Hey everyone, welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. So today we're talking about Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Ning. I'm going to say that, yes. Okay, so this is a high fantasy book no matter what anybody tells you, and essentially it's in a world where it's separated out by three castes. The upper caste, where the richest people are, are demons, and these demons look like animals, like humanistic animals, and then the caste below them is half demon, half animal, or half demon, half human, so like some animalistic features, and then the lowest of the low, the paper caste, is um, all human. So our main character, Light, is part of the paper caste, and she's got some really kind of gorgeous eyes, I guess, which has tipped off the demons who want to kind of kidnap her to become the king, the demon king's concubine. So she's kidnapped from her home, taken to the palace where she's taught essentially how to become a concubine. And um, along the way, she kind of gets brought into kind of palace intrigue, perhaps falls in love with someone. However, this is not a kind of happy tale, ha happily ever after kind of fairy no. tale prince sweeps princess off her feet kind of concept. It is very kind of graphic and there is a rape scene. Um, is it the first book in a series? It is good. I, I mean, it has to be. With the way that it ended. Right, but Goodreads doesn't look like, at least the Goodreads app is not looking like it is. So, I don't know. I mean, you could make it a series. I wouldn't read the next book. I wouldn't read the next book either. And listening to you talk about it actually kind of made me think about why I'm frustrated by this book. So this is like a great premise. Like, I this to me, this it feels like it should be almost like a Sarah J. Moss kind of book premise, and that gets me. But I didn't like the writing. See, I thought the I thought that she could write. I just don't think that it fits in the YA genre. I just well, don't. No, it's, it's I not, think it, it's it feels not a like YA an adult book. book. It feels like an adult book. But my problem is like I'm reading it, and there's a part where she's like interacting with the king for like the tenth time, and they say something about like his snout or his hooves. I can't remember what it was, and I was like, oh, I forgot. So I think that plays more into world building. I don't think right. she was great at world building. But that's writing. See, but I think like her actual writing style worked for me. See, I, just I just didn't. She just didn't have a handle on the plot. I think no, and I feel like and honestly, this might be one of those books because it's like what three hundred fifty pages long. Yeah, maybe it needs another fifty pages of descriptions. I mean, I guess I just wasn't I, interested in the plot, which sounds terrible because the. Graphic things kind of going on in the plot. The idea that I'm kind of apathetic to it is just unfortunate. Well, but the thing, like the thing is, like I feel like that this is the type of book I would normally want to read based off the description. This is like this sounds like something I would read. I would probably listen to it. It might be easier to listen to this than to read it. I don't like humanistic animals. I don't like talking animals. They drive me nuts. But I, I know. But they didn't like. They weren't like animal animals. But they were. And that didn't bother, but maybe they were supposed to, and I just couldn't picture it because I just couldn't get they had, into like, it. Snouts and like deer ears. I don't know, but like, but then they also were like they well without going into it, but they were enough humanoid that they could have sex with humans. I mean, I think I'm not getting into that, but I think you could probably make it work if you wanted it bad enough. Plus, I mean, it wasn't like he was like super nice about it. Uh, <laughs> But I thought they were supposed to, they were like, they were supposed to have like, each, I see that's the thing, like, I don't remember, and honestly, I don't remember the other girls' names, and I didn't, I finished this book three days ago, I don't care, I don't care about like huge chunks of it, honestly, the part that like stuck with me the most is they kill her dog. That was sad. That was sad. No, the thing that stuck with me is she, each person in this world is born, and they get like a pendant at the time of birth, and like in the pendant it has a word. Each person, at the time of birth, they get a pendant, like, that has a word in it, and it opens, like, on your 18th birthday or whatever. So, I, like, really just wanted to know what the pendant said. And it said that, didn't it, at the end? It, it, it does get there. I was kind of let down, but yeah. it gets there. Um, we should write this. By the way, we should also say, um, this was given to us at Book Expo, but I also downloaded the ERG off of Edelweiss. Same here. Um, so we should rate it, though. All right, so our rating scale goes from five unicorns down to two unicorns. If it was spectacular and doesn't deserve a horn, it is a horse. So where are you at? So, like, when I was reading it, I was frustrated with it, and I wanted to give it a two, but I just think the premise and, like, aspects of it deserve it to be a three. See, and I'm at a two. I can't re recommend this to anybody. I oh, won't recommend this to anybody. That's part of the problem, too. 
Like, like kids at my library aren't going to want to read this. Like, I actually have the arc, and I usually give it to a kid, and I'm going to have to find an adult that wants it. And if we weren't videoing it, I wouldn't have finished it. Well, that's possible, too. So that is where we are on Girls of Paper and Fire. See you around. Bye.